This video is called The Inability for Mankind to See the Good and Reproduce. I put this yellow flag here to mark my perspective. Everything else is an attempt to uh, express how I see things. And certainly, I see with my right eye. And it's there simply because that's where the window is, not because I want to make some kind of left side statement. All right. When we look at things in terms of logic, racial continuities, philosophical continuities through race and ethnic groups, uh, the philosophies and the variations, certainly one must say to themselves, there are many philosophies and many variations of many religions all over the world. Why were my parents right? Why should I assume that I'm right? And we must apply logic. Animals are domesticated by man to, do th to, to ultimately have their instincts um, confused, okay? They're confused about what they feel and what they sense, in other words. So where does this logic take us? It takes us to mind, body, soul, and spirit. If somebody is mentally ill, is it because, the mainstream, so is it because mainstream society says so? Or should I look at what I know? Naturally, mind, body, soul, and spirit connection. If this phrase has ever been said, and you consider yourself a religious person, should you not consider this? What does it mean to be healthy, mentally, physically, spiritually? What do they mean by the spirit? Why is that a play on words? When I started off some 20 years ago discussing religious ideas, I made some mistakes, but certainly I was right, and not for the entirely right reason. I would argue, basically, variations of this statement. Christian Ebos are the most devoted to the Creator, and it shows in their works. The Nigerian Civil War, you had people fighting to the death in the name of the principles of good and you had people praying to God who were starved to death. And then of course you had a degree of people who just joined the military because they didn't have any food. But certainly they were in the spirit of resisting a very worldly, oppressive force, which is the full Anna or the Fulani tribe. They were fully concerned with worldly matters and not spiritual matters. And this shows in their works. One of the largest, if not the largest, Christian tribes in the world is the Igbo tribe. That was my argument. If there is a more respectable religion, explain why that is. If there is a larger tribe, um, point them out. Nobody could. For over 20 years, nobody could, and still nobody can. Certainly I was concerned to some degree with my image my ethnicity, my people being right. And I looked at it as my dad is this brain surgeon who's unmatched. There's no one like him in society. He's given away all this uh, money and charity, and he lives this selfless life that is basically unrecognized. Certainly there were little bootlickers pittances, like uh, one of the top doctors in the Top Doctor magazines, uh, in the Top Doctor magazine. Uh, he wrote in a book called The True Meaning of, um, of Wealth, I believe it is, with the Dalai Lama, okay? These things can be seen as absolutely giving him his credit, but no one knows who he is. If I told people his name, you know, over 99 times out of 100, nobody would know who he is. So certainly, these things are insignificant compared to the subtle yet obvious to those who have done their research form of credit that he was actually receiving, when one, especially when, when one considers the obstacles. So one must consider mind, body, soul, spirit, and obstacles. Do we look at a, a poor person who lives a very spiritual life, who has dedicated their life to God, and who is dirty, as saying, hey, this person is dirty, they're poor. If they're so blessed by God, why hasn't God made them rich? Certainly, we must consider the, the, the world's contribution to worldly wealth. It is stupid not to see it that way. And I, it is disheartening and rather disconcerting to see that the masses of Christians seem to be embracing that pathetic idea that your status in this world reflects your spiritual worth. 
that if black people, for example, are so spiritual, how come they live in such a, an unfortunate state? Imagine if that scale was applied to Jesus. You know, the symbols that they have in almost all of their churches and around their necks proves them wrong definitively. Yet for the life of them, they cannot look outside their race, their worldly view, and their selfish view. They cannot, with a clear and objective mind, compare their philosophy to my argument that has been, I've been spreading uh, for over 20 years. And obviously there are variations of it in society. Obviously black people have been firing back to some degree. Obviously their despicable view has gone thoroughly answered, and there is no excuse for holding on to it. It is satanic. They are denied. Jesus does not know them, so to speak. The man that Jesus represents in the Bible, the person who was the closest to God at that time, does not know them. The Bible talks about things in terms of tribes. Again, it goes back to my uh, second point. That is one of the largest tribes in the world. I used to describe it as the largest Christian tribe because define what it means to be a Christian tribe as a tribe, not a clan, not a nation, not a, not a grouping of people uh, who share, share a nationality or something like, you know, African American or so on, but a tribe, okay? Not, not a tribe that is mixed, but is almost entirely Christian, okay? Not a mixed tribe like the Yorbas that is partially Muslim, partially Christian. So the Bible describes things in terms of tribes. Jesus is not, uh, you know, he's, he's the lion of Judah, not the lion of Israel, not the lion of the Middle East, okay? Not the lion of the descendants of uh, Joseph, right? But the offspring of David and the lion of Judah because Judah was the tribe that supported David. The kingdom of Judah stayed more true while the Israelites worshiped Baal to a large degree. Of course, Josiah destroyed uh, temples to Baal. Anyway, the West was arming the Nigerian government while this tribe was being loyal to the truest principles of Christianity and they were being slaughtered. The eugenicists on the West were basically killing them off. When the smoke cleared, was there this total embrace of the, the, the significance of the Civil War here in America? where quite a few of Nigerians, quite a few Igbos made their way to America. Was there this, uh, uh, was the red carpet, so to speak, was the yellow carpet rolled out for the Igbos who came here? Were people like me treated with the utmost respect? Or were they treated with contempt? Not only were they black, not only are they black, but they're Africans. And if they come from a nice family, how much more is expected of them kind of attitude? instead of understanding that how much more are they sabotaged to prove uh, narratives of white supremacy true. The world knows that the Igbos were armed with inferior weaponry, so they would prolong the war and more of them would die. When they were being armed, did the people who armed them expect them to gain the upper hand? Or did they expect the war would be prolonged and, their profit, and, and they would profit from this war that would ultimately kill the children of God? that they and the rest of the world were shamelessly uh, turning their backs on. Two to three million people were die, di died in the genocide. The number was understated so they could downplay the truths of the Igbo perspective. There was documentaries that said that the, the deaths were due to overpopulation. That's like saying the deaths of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were due to overpopulation. There's a grain of truth in there, right? The population density affected the casualty rate, the death rate. But certainly it's a fucking idiot and, and a hypocrite like the people in the church today who would make such an argument. Nigeria's population, being the most, it being the most populous um, and post populated country in Africa, the oil, fifth largest supplier of the world, is, is what I read at the time. Its importance, right? The, the peacekeepers, you know, they have some of the most peacekeepers in the UN, I read at some point. Okay, Nigerian peacekeepers all across Africa, right? It's a very influential. Uh, place politically, financially, and it has a, its religious significance. It is the heart of Africa. So who wins that has everything to do with who's winning the, the greater religious war in the world. America had moral reasons to intervene. They had religious reasons to intervene. In a predominantly Christian nation, it was in their best interest if they were actually Christians to ensure that Christians dominate nations like that, especially ones that are of the utmost significance. They chose war profiteering and eugenics over the principles of Christianity, 
why the masses of people during that time period were denying the black man his civil rights and the civil rights movement was taking place. During that time period, Vietnam, there was the rapes and murders in Vietnam. You can't simply blame the government if you're an American soldier who's raping and killing innocent Vietnamese women during that time in a Phoenix program when Phoenix has to do with reproduction. The Ben Ben Bird, the Benu Bird, Raw, Skull Center, the Phoenix, the Greek Phoenix, a reproduction and fertility symbol. You know, are you, uh, is it a coincidence that people who logically can be placed above you in the spiritual order are being wiped out while you are, ha while you have a Phoenix program in another nation? Certainly, eugenics was the reason, it was the main reason the Nigerian genocide of the Igbo people was allowed to take place. I pointed out that uh, some Igbos died fighting and some died starving and praying to God. I was told when I was younger there's two black saints in Catholicism. One was a Brazilian slave and the other was an Igbo. And the Brazilian slave most likely was an Igbo when you consider the, the significance of Christianity to the Igbo tribe versus the significance of Christianity to Angolan, Angolan specifically the Kunini people. Okay. And how, uh, okay, so it's very likely that that other uh, 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 saint was uh, in Igbo as well, for that reason. Even if I am the last one left, I will pick up my rifle and go forward, was a quote that I would commonly say from Ajuku. Ajuku's daughter stayed at this very house. I was the first person to let her borrow a Tupac CD, and she said it wasn't her kind of music, which was symbolic of a cultural rejection uh, by my people because of African-American culture, which ultimately was symbolic of her misunderstanding my spiritual worth, one could argue, as there was spiritual messages in the Tupac CD. Okay. And I, I sought to explain that to her to no avail. Then, and again, I'm not saying she's a bad person, but I'm saying that the lack of martial arts insights leads people that we have the utmost respect for down the wrong path. It is the martial arts direction, is the true spirit, it is the true direction of humanity and one's ability to grip, right, get a grip on this. And there's different, uh, you know, having a, taking someone's hand, people masturbating even, there's different significance of the grip and phallic symbols and the grip of the sword, the knife, the spear. And the spear wasn't made for my hand size. And even as such, right, we see this thing made for the grip and it has, it, it's harsh on the hands. It, it, it's kind of like a, a very hard, almost sharp metal. So we have the Northern European Protestant movement, the German princes, you know, really for the sake of white supremacy, rejecting the Catholic, the Catholicism. Okay, they, they cited a bunch of grievances, like 99 grievances or whatever it was. Okay, they, they cited the, um, the little uh, trinkets or whatever they're called that the Catholics were selling. Really trivial matters compared to the damage that was done from splitting up the church. And of course, Martin Luther himself is said to have married a nun. Right? Some people accuse him of having done that so that he could marry this nun. It had everything to do with fertility and reproduction. To make a long story short, it's not a coincidence that the Illuminati and the Nazis both come from Germany. And so does uh, Marx and Engels. They were Germans, German Jew, uh, Germans of Jewish descent that spread communism, which also affects the reproductive cycle. So the continued existence of man or a people is not so important. The spirit is. They have proven my royal family martial art argument by siding with Neri to find their lives. They are subjects based on worldly control. The world is full of fair weather worshippers, and this leads to disgust, right? Gust, a gust of wind, fair level. They die in the gust of wind and not standing firm in the true spirit of God. Read Matthew 10, 22, and Matthew 10, really Matthew in general. The natural form of the spirit receptivity and leadership, one's ability to weather the storm and to stand firm and a willingness to die for the truest principles of God and to breathe in that direction and not for the purpose of social control, controlling reproduction, white supremacy, Jewish supremacy, Asian supremacy, or anything else, but rather the truest principles of good. That determines the natural form and the forging of the spirit. Show me any church that has ever, any white church, for example, has ever made the argument that the Igbos are the top of the spiritual order or that this is a martial arts direction. We do not see that. And if we do, certainly it's watered down and covered up in a way that favors white supremacists. Really, we see that with the Christian identity and the Mormons and other people that make these sorts of arguments. 